Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with more iRacing. This time out we're here for some redemption in the Formula 4 Fix series. Yes, of course, if you missed out on the video uh, that went live towards the end of last week, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. Of course, we raced the F4s here at Spa and to, to cut a long story short, we got wrecked uh, quite late on in the day. So we actually had a really good fun race up to that point. So the goal tonight is to see if we can actually try and make it to the finish of one of these F4 fixed events. We're P20 in what is a very, very tight SOF lobby. Uh, I think we've got 23 runners in this, 22, 23 cars here. So hopefully there's going to be a good chance to try and pick up some eye racing. Fingers crossed though we can just make it to the flag. That is the big goal. Well, up over the line then, that is going to be a 22-2. So we didn't actually improve on my second lap there. 22-1 for an opener was actually very, very quick, so we'll take that. Um, but I am expecting other cars to improve. I don't think we'll stay on pole. Well, here we are then, lining up on the grid at Spa. And somehow it is pole position here by two tenths of a second over Guillemy. But... Yeah, it's probably not the best track to be starting from pole on iRacing. There is going to be a lot of slipstream as we head up the hill on that one. I guess all we can try and do is break free from as many cars as possible and just kind of hang on and pray. Oh, here we go. Ready from Spa, four red lights. And it is going to be the lights out and away we go. Let's see what we can do as we head down in towards someone there. A little bit of a scattered start from myself. Jeff gave me the call a little bit later. I was expecting, but we do hang on through Turn 1, but now it's just going to be the battle of the slipstream as we head down into Rouge, Eau Rouge and Rally on there. Guillemy and Romald just behind. No, it looks like Romald is tucked back in. I was hoping they go side by side in through here on lap 1. So there is, I mean, it's a case of how many rather than if any cars get past us as we head up the Camel Strait. We're just going to try and sit on the inside there. We can already see... A McLaren livery car that will get a run as we head up the back straight. The number two thinks about it, but I think we just haven't given him a car's width. As there goes Guillemy. Is he going to be able to get fully ahead by the time we get in towards the com? Yes, he is. Late on the brakes around the outside there. And often in the last F4 race, we did a lot of other cars able to carry a bit more confidence 
at the top of the hill. But, yeah, I just don't know what it is for me. I just don't really have the confidence to really sort of try and hang on in there against a lot of other drivers. I think I'm worried just about a bit of rear locking and maybe taking someone else out. So I'd rather just play it safe early on in this race as we head down through No Name. There you can just see Gilliam not quite getting the run. I'm sure he would have wanted. Sorry, it's not Gilliam, is it? I've completely pronounced his name wrong at the start here as he gets a horrible run Come through on, on around the outside will go off the corner still going to try and hang it around here not an often a place still where you make overtakes but we'll certainly try it as we head down in towards the next couple of corners he's going to squeeze me but we will make it work and back up then into the lead of the race as we head down in towards the final sector didn't actually realize in the last f4 race we did that you can take a lot of curb through here on the outside as you can see Ramal just trying to make the move work as well so now we've got to try and break free as we head up in towards the final couple of corners of this opening lap you need about one second to break out of the slipstream in these cars there you see Nicholas as well getting involved so yeah I, don't, I actually don't know how to pronounce his name to be honest um, down to P4 I do apologize still again gonna be a nine lap race here but I mean if these guys just slipstream each other they should be able to close back in but if they battle too hard too early on Maybe we've got an opportunity here to try and have quite a lonely race at the front of the field, which, to be honest, after the last F4 race I did here, I would absolutely take. And you can just see, there we go, gap opens up to 1.4 as we cross the start-finish line to finish off lap 1, 225. Not too shabby for an opener, but, I mean, if, yeah, if we, if we were to win this, and it is still a very, very big if, 97 I rating could be coming our way there, which would be very, very handy, as now you can see the gap up to two seconds. We've got to try and run away early on here but there's still no guarantee of anything like I said you know they can if they work together slipstream back closer to me and of course you know a, a mistake in the F4 cars is not out of the ordinary for me either so far this season it's 2.1 2.2 the gap's just going up I think they went side by side up for a Rouge and Rally on it's it's still incredibly early days but that opening lap and uh, sector have worked out rather nicely I can just see oh I think there's Maybe other incidents going on. There's plenty of cars shifting around on the relative. I've got no idea what's going on. Might just be a little bit of lag in the server, something like that. But as we head down through the middle sector, the gap opens up to four seconds, and P6 now is up into P4. So, yeah, I don't quite know what exactly is going on behind, but the gap at the front's opening up, and that's the most important thing. So, we can have close to a five second lead by the end of lap two here. Sebastian Vettel might be retired from real life Formula 1, but it's not going to try and stop us. Maybe just giving him a bit of a tribute here at Spa to one of the ways he used to win Grand Prix at Red Bull. Just build up a 10 second lead in five laps and then control the pace from there. Even more instants kicking off down at Lacoum. And the gap's still opening up more and more. I mean, I apologise if this does end up turning into quite a boring race, but like I said, I came back to Spa for some redemption today. Monday night, so last chance we had to get a race in here in F4, but I just wanted to go for it again. I just felt like we rode so much more after what was a fantastic race last time out. Up until it went horribly wrong, of course. There does seem to be a good battle going on behind us there. Three cars separated by a tenth of a second as we head up the back straight, and this might just be aiding us in our just attempt to build up a big lead early on still pushing fairly hard but trying not to take too many big risks anything like that spa is still a track that can absolutely turn back and bite you and of course you know we can desperately do with a race like Rudskugun where we get away well we didn't quite manage a zero x at Rudskugun we did pick up a two x in the pit lane um, and then also got rammed after we finished which was rather frustrating which gave us six instant points but yeah if we can walk away with a zero x here I think it really would be a lot of redemption when you think, obviously, we got the squalified with 17x last time round. When 12 of that was contact, I think none of which we could really control. And then we had two loss of controls as well, because the car was destroyed. Well, it looks like Philip behind. I'm basing this all on the relative, but it seems like he might have been able to break free from that whole gaggle of cars here. You can see pretty much, I think, second through to sixth last time, or all in one train. Maybe that gap's now extended even further down. Philip, yeah, might be now in some clear air to the end as well. Of course, it is just about breaking the slipstream here at Spa. Incredibly difficult to do so, but yeah, if you can, then obviously because cars just tend to battle so much around here in these lower formula races, you really do just get a golden opportunity 
just a bolt free. Is this that? It's not quite another new fast lap of the day. Still the comfortably quickest of anyone. 22-1. So yeah, track conditions definitely not as good as they were in that last race that we did. There you can see Philip now finally sets a decent benchmark on a 22-5. Mild as well, a 22-8. So yeah, maybe a few drivers are starting to get into a little bit of clear air. You know, sort of first 10 minutes have been chaotic, as you would come to expect from Spa. And if you're stuck in the midfield, it's just going to continue to be that way right to the very end. But Ramald is hanging on inside the DRS... Oh, sorry, the slipstream range, if you like to say. Of course, I play a lot of F1. So sometimes, sometimes they're going to get the wrong words there. But, yeah, Ramald hanging on just to Philip at the moment. He needs to nail that middle sector. He wants any chance at P2. But I'm hoping none of them at all are going to get a chance at the win here. Seven minutes left on the clock. We're still sitting pretty. Gaps now, 9.3. Well, it looks like Romaldi is still sticking close to Philip here as we've just tried to up the pace a little bit. Mainly because Romaldi just nabbed fast his lap off me by virtue of getting some slipstream assistance. So as we send it through the final couple of corners, of course, quite risky uh, to be trying to chase fast his lap this late on in the day when it could all still go wrong, but out of the final corner. Felt good. Oh, it's a 21-9. So we're still a tenth away. I don't think sensibly we can risk much more to go much quicker. Would have been nice to get a slipstream. I think, yeah, we've just got to try and bring the car home, though. Two more laps here from spa franc -Fauchamp. Um Well, I don't want to say it too early, but this, this so far, this is what can happen in the F4 cars. I haven't showcased it much this year. We have spent a lot of the season getting crashed into, but, you know, maybe, maybe we just need a practice race every week. Our white flags out then here from Spa. Car does feel like it's still getting quicker and quicker though. Tyres just don't seem to wear off, but of course the fuel absolutely does. Over the line, 22-0. We have been so consistent throughout most of this as well. Spa and these F4 cars here. He's a very, very good fun combo. Was That would have been quite bad to do to start the final lap of the race. That wall at the inside wall at Turn 1, but Romald and Phillips still battling out then behind us. Has allowed the gap to extend up to 10 seconds in a 20-minute sprint race. It's not bad going, and it could go even higher, depending on how hard they continue to battle on this final lap. But, I mean, yeah, I apologise. It's not been the most action-packed race in the world, but th this one was more for me uh, than for you guys. I just wanted a bit of redemption here in the F4 cars, and luck said, as long as I don't do anything stupid on this final lap. Redemption is what we are going to get as we head up through Lacoon there. Sometimes opting for third gear can be a little bit scary if you nip the curb like I just did because you can get a bit of wheel spin and then settle the rear end. But I feel like, yeah, it just allows you a little bit more bite through the front. Don't think it really saves anything, but, you know, it's just what we've been doing when we feel comfortable enough there. Fourth gear sometimes just feels like you don't scrub off enough speed because you haven't got the natural slowdown of the engine brake through there but of course a lot of the lap to be honest yeah it's just all fourth and fifth gear for the most part who on i'm leaving it in fifth on entry because pretty much when you hit the red line it's the time just to blend the brake there and slide the car through pull on as best as possible so easy to pick up one x through there but we have not done that up to now today as we head down in towards the chicane one final time they can really try and attack the curbs now that i've built up some confidence around this place once again and then Again, leaving in fourth gear pretty much like I said. Once you get on the red line, you can then just coast it through the next corner there. You can run a lot wider through there. Didn't realise that the first time we did that race this week, but 11 seconds the gap's opened up to, but it looks like Philip might hold on ahead of Ramalda unless he can get a big run up in towards the final couple of corners of this race. We head up in towards uh, Blanchemont, though, for the final time. This, this is the kind of F4 racing that, I mean, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't create the best content in the world but you know for me personally near enough 100 i rating should be a fair old chunk of sr as well through the final couple of corners it's a dominant win here in the f4 fix series that's exactly what we need a second dominant win of the week and zero x this time around as well is even better it won't quite oh we did set fast his lap at the end that might be the perfect race let's go have a look at the results well, there we go then, having a look at the final race results. It was the perfect race there. Pole position, fastest lap, led every lap, 
and race victory. Absolutely love to see it there. And as the number 20 car as well. 97 I rating, 0.28 SR. Can't really say a lot more than that, to be honest. Look how many splits there are as well. Formula 4 on iRacing is in a very, very good place when you head to a track like Spa. But 11.8 seconds clear at the line. Our average lap was 1.3 seconds quicker than anyone else. But like I said, you know, that one was more for me uh, than it was for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching nonetheless. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And we will return very, very soon with more iRacing. Hopefully, I mean, we, we, we like to win some races. Maybe there can be a few more on the way.